Happy March 15th, one day from 316 Day. So I'm excited about tomorrow and the parade. Uh, but this is pretty informal. So we'll let uh, City Manager Bob Layton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, got, we have five speakers on the public agenda um, on the first page. That's all I have. Page two, number one under new business. Um, this would, if approved by the council, this would institute a ranked voting process for the filling of city council vacancies, and it would uh, apply to both the DAB and the city council votes on those vacancies. Um, Councilmember Johnson was the one, uh, promoter of this, and it's, I think it's been discussed for over a year now. Um, I did have one question on that. Was the former ordinance also requiring a written explanation a requirement? No, because there were comments at the time of the votes, right? Right, and I ask that that be put in there because several folks in District 3 questioned why council members were supporting the folks that we appointed. And in the effort to be transparent, I put that in there so that council members could explain why they supported someone. That would also go for DAB members as well. Okay, let's talk about it later. I have a couple of questions. Okay. Number two um, would approve a $2 million um, allocation of ARPA funding for the construction of a 37,000 square foot addition to the Child Advocacy Center. Number three would approve a two year contract for groundwater monitoring in the North Industrial Corridor. Page three. Number four would approve an allocation, excuse me, an application for $17 million from the Climate Pollution Reduction Grant Program. Projects to be included um, are energy audits for city facilities, uh, city purchase of electronic vehicles, the installation of charging stations at uh, several city facilities, um, for, and these would be for public use, uh, installation of solar panels uh, at the hub and the planting of 2,600 new trees. That would be all done over a five-year period if we were successful in receiving the grant. And, and again, this is no matching funds required from the city of Wichita? I don't recall that it, re it doesn't, right? Yeah, it does not require matching funds. Uh, the number five would approve a million dollar budget for the repairs and restoration work at the Manissa Bridge. Um, number six is the is approving the design budget for a grit channel repair project at the wastewater treatment plant number two. You can claim credit for that one if you want, Vicki. Yeah, <laughs> Who doesn't love grit? That's right. Uh, we don't. We have to get rid of it. Um, number seven is the quarterly financial report. Page four, uh, number one under the, the non-consent planning agenda. There's a difference between the, D, the DAB and the MAPC recommendations, so that's why it's in front of you. Um, and then number two, this item has been previously in front of you. You sent it back to the DAB so that they could hear from the applicant. That has been done now, and the DAB recommendation is back to you. That's all I have on page four. On page five, Number one, under non-consent airport agenda, this would approve a lease agreement and access agreement for the development of a parcel and taxiway on the east side of Jabara. And that's noteworthy because that will be our first project on the east side. Yes. And then under council member agenda, as requested by council member Glasscock, we've prepared a report on uh, that's related to the public comment procedures for city council meetings. We looked at what some other cities of our size um, are doing in terms of allowing public participation in council meetings, and that's all summarized in the report. Bob, can I have a question? Yes. And I, I talked to legal, but I just thought I'd bring it up too. Um, I have never, I've been here five years, I have never seen the recommended action is just to receive the report so this is just receive and file right we're not making a recommendation I, I uh, there was a I think the uh, council member Glasscock can speak for himself but he asked for the item to come up for discussion by the council and we thought to help set the stage for that discussion we would do research so we're giving you that 
Um, and then it's up to you to decide whether you want to change procedures or simply just receive the report. And my question is just, it seems like a workshop topic, maybe not an agenda item topic, but I mean, are we planning on having a workshop on it? That was the item um, that I asked to be moved from the workshop to this night meeting, since okay. it's a night meeting so we could get more engagement. If, if people, are, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So will we still have a workshop then if there is an we, opportunity? No, this is taking the place of having a workshop. So okay. then after this, after we just receive and file, then it will be an agenda item in the future to decide what we do? Yes, if the council decides to change process, then you'll give us that direction and then we would change the ordinance or but, the council procedure. Sorry, just one more question so I know I'm clear. If, if one decides to vote to receive and file, it doesn't necessarily mean that they agree with the forthcoming action. It's just, yes, we got the report. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How, however, we could decide to take action on it at this meeting. It would, um, what you'd want to do is give us direction to prepare an ordinance change or, and I can't remember how much of this is also impacted by council policy or a council policy document. Okay. I had to go back and look at that. Okay. Yeah. And the only question, would that have to happen during the council members' comments at the end or that could that happen um, in, in place of receiving file? Could it happen here or would that need to happen at the end of the meeting? Um, no, this is the time to do it. This would be the time it's to do it. Yes, because it's on the agenda as a scheduled item. Yeah. And Councilman Johnson, I'm glad that you pulled it from just the workshop to this so then we can have public comment on it too. I think yep. that's kind of the purpose, so thank you. Yep. And I think to, to your question, you would just make a motion to receive and file and then give the staff direction, and that would be it. Also a reminder, that I think when we first talked about this going on this meeting, that some kind of mayor, I think you made a comment, some others, you wanted to maybe have a broader discussion about engagement, public engagement. So if that's, if you want to do that, then we do have some additional uh, PowerPoint slides that we can talk about what we're already doing and then build on that if you want. I just didn't know if that's we the would. direction you all wanted to go. I would like to see those, uh, the slide for that specific public engagement uh, research that sure. has already been done. Sure. Okay. And then number two is a retroactive approval of travel. Uh, that's all I have on page five and nothing on page six. Page seven, number four A, uh, that would approve technical amendments to a sub-recipient agreement with WSU and Destination Innovation for the Violence Interrupter Program. Number eight, uh, I'm sorry, page eight, uh, five A, would approve uh, a revised uh, design agreement and budget for the multimodal facility known as the hub. Do we have a date of when that's gonna break ground yet? Um, the best, I, I don't know if I can tell you on breaking ground, it's my understanding we'll go out to bid in April on that. I always say that with caution on this project, so. <laughs> Seven. I have a quick, um, oh, sorry, I have a quick okay. question about 5A. So the increase, because the increase in the revised budget is be, would, because, would be because of our action on four, the climate pollution reduction grant application, and that transfers over to this 5A, correct? Um, actually, no, I think this one reflects um, money that we're receiving from WAMPO. So okay. staff can help me on that. Yeah, correct. The, yes. the two, because that other grant has not been received yet, that's not part of the funding. Okay. Um, number seven would approve the annual agreement with uh, Farm Shop LLC for the operation of Old Town Farm and Art Market. Number eight, uh, would approve an agreement with Sedgwick County for the funding of an overdose investigative analyst uh, to assist in fentanyl enforcement and prevention activities. And we would do that in cooperation with the Sedgwick County Health Department. Number nine is, uh, is simply an uh, extension of our annual uh, JAG grant. Uh, page nine, number 11, would approve a KDOT grant award for motorcyclist training program. Number 13, would approve a replacement of a pump valve, of pump valve components at Cheney Reservoir. Number 14, would revise the engineer's estimate for phase three of the Proct Wetlands project and allowing, that would allow us to accept the 
um, low bid for the project, which was 6% higher than the original estimate. Page 10, six, number 16, would accept the Kansas Department of Children and Families grant for support of child care activities in five city facilities. Woo. Mayor, that is all I have uh, for the 19th. And again, a reminder to everybody that's listening, it is an evening meeting that will start at 6 o'clock. Um, back to item number 16 that uh, Council Member Tuttle just uh, congratulated or was happy about. Can you talk about the Child Care Aware of Kansas incentive program? Um, Troy, do you want to talk about it? So this grant is administered through the state. We have several facilities that have after, scare, after school programs as well as summer school programs that are licensed. And so we are able to uh, get those grants and we've received grants for the past two years. Uh, this one is probably not as big as the ones we've had in the past, but total with all of them, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood about $2.4 million that we've received over the past three years. Does that answer your questions? And for residents that may be interested in this, how, how do they find more information? So it's actually supplementing our programming that's going on at our rec centers. So it's helping us cut our costs and expand the program. We have, so it's not necessarily a grant that goes back out to the public, but we have other ways, particularly working with housing, we have some other programs that have discounts for our summer um, camps as well. Okay. I have one question. Yeah. Uh, on number 15, it seems there's only one district that's been left out of the sidewalk repair assessment program. District 5, are there no sidewalks in District 5 or? In, th in this round, there were none that were repaired, and these are assessments going back against the property owner where we made repairs or replaced sidewalks. Oh, okay. Okay. So they actually may be happy that there aren't any. That there aren't any there. It's a good, it's a good thing then. <laughs> okay, thank you. We, we can change that though, right? <laughs> we, we can help out. <laughs> Mayor, if there's no other comments about the agenda, then we have our monthly presentation from a department. This is being coordinated by Parks and Rec, and uh, I'll, Troy, do you want, you want to take it? There's three facilities that are going to be highlighted today. Good morning, my name is Troy Hopman. I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation. Welcome back from Washington, D.C. So a few years back, uh, former Council Member Fry and Council Member Tuttle had asked for annual updates or reviews of some of our facilities, particularly three in particular that have a huge impact in our community. Uh, they have um, huge economic drivers as well. So the three that we have here for you today is the ice rink, which has had uh, a lot of changes in the past few years. Uh, golf has also had a few changes in the past few years, and Stryker has had uh, some, some upgrades that we would like to talk about as well. So um, each one of these uh, staff members are going to be coming up here and give a review. So the first one is from the ice rink, and I have Sean O'Reilly here. And also on, on the call is his supervisor, Louis uh, Lombardo. He is uh, monitoring everything that Sean says. Thanks, Troy. Um, thanks for the opportunity. Um, my name is Sean O'Reilly. I'm the general manager at the uh, Wichita Ice Center. I'll just give you a little bit of history. I moved here 27 years ago as a hockey player, and the rink has been basically my home since then. So. If you had asked me 27 years ago if I was going to be the general manager of the ice rink, though, I would have said no, not a chance. But I'm glad I am. Um, recently, as you can see, everybody can read probably, so I'm not going to read everything. But um, this past Christmas, we were quite successful uh, during our public skates. Um, average about three, 
300 to 350 skaters. Uh, we've got some customers returning that have not uh, been around for many years. And then, um, yeah, it's all right there. I, I don't want to talk <laughs> through that because <laughs> it can explain it much better than I can. I also want to say this is the, the, the one part of my job that I dislike the most, getting up and speaking in front of people, so I apologize. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I guess we can go on to the next slide. Who's in charge of that? Am I in charge of that? Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, wonderful. There you go, you can just use the up and down banner. Up and down banner, okay, perfect. All right. So, unfortunately with one sheet of ice uh, this past year, uh, we weren't able to um, book as many parties as we wanted, but on those weekends when we could, um, there's space for eight parties in the rooms, and basically every Saturday afternoon we had we were full. So um, with the second sheet of ice up, we've been able to bring more around, obviously. Um, looking to improve in the summertime and uh, the slower months. Um, so um, I did write some notes in some of this stuff too. So hold on, just one second. Apologize. Um, so in 2022, we had 87 skaters over our um, sessions. In 2023, we were up to 156. Um, we have sessions on Tuesdays and Saturday mornings. Unfortunately, uh, when the chiller went down, we had to cancel some summer sessions due to the ice conditions. And this past session, we had another 160 uh, registrants. So we're getting back to, to kind of pre um, pre-ice failure levels, if not getting better, which is good. Oh, not too many. Uh, we've got a little thunder program that we introduce kiddos to hockey, obviously. Um, we have a rental program that allows them to experience hockey for a lot cheaper than they would if they had to buy gear. Uh, it's a $50 deposit, and at the end of it all, we give them uh, $25 back. So. I think we've got 56 kids signed up. Um, in 23, we had 27, or no, sorry, 22, we had 27, 23, we had 45. This program this year, we got 52, so we're growing slowly but surely. It's taking some time, but we're getting there. Um, ice rentals, our youth, pro, our youth program has about 18 practices a, a week. Brings a lot of money. We uh, hosted um, a couple of tournaments. We had the National League Finals here. And then, uh, of course, we've got the figure skating competition. We had a, the synchros were here. And I will get to that in a little bit here. Um, we're looking to host an ACHA tournament coming up. And then uh, we're going there. But to go back to the synchronized skating impact, Brought a lot of participants into the area. Um, U.S. figure skating really likes Wichita because of the proximity of the rinks. Um, if you look at some of their other events, they're picking bigger cities like Denver, um, Nashville, uh, Detroit, places like that. But they still come back. To, they, they keep coming back to Wichita because we've got three sheets of ice within a mile and a half. And that's um, not normal. So, right, Lou? He's, he's not paying attention. Chance. He's not paying attention. It's OK. <laughs> um, there are some photos of our figure skaters. We're actually hosting uh, Mid-Continent this weekend as well. Uh, skaters from Oklahoma, Kansas City, Missouri are coming in to skate this weekend. So we're looking forward to that. Um, obviously, we, everybody knows about the mechanical problems. Um, and we've been running two sheets of ice since January. Uh, we had some dehumidifiers put in, and that's work, those are working great. And as I told somebody earlier, the last time I was up here, I made a, made a prediction, and it blew up in my face. So I'm not going to do that. But we're hoping to be back and uh, running on the system. Um, 
soon, is what I will say. Um, and that's what's been going on. At, when we first took over at RMS, we, 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 know, we knew that we needed to change the lights, so we got a, we got a quote from a company. Um, and that quote was about $50,000. So we, we actually did it ourselves over the past uh, three months. And we did it for less than $10,000. And we've already seen um, a decrease in our energy bills. So uh, I think they've basically already paid for themselves. Um, we've got, we've got, I mean, we're, we're doing the same thing in the lobby, and then obviously we've got, uh, we were lucky enough to, to um, secure a sponsorship from Sonic, and we're going to have uh, some new time clocks um, in the building, which is good because, as you can see, you can't really, uh, well, the light bulbs are old in the old stuff. So, um, for the rental spaces, we've got the bar back up. Wu and uh, D Dylan were by, or Dalton were by, which was nice. Thank you for coming. Um, the hockey players enjoy it, and it's, I think it's one of the best spots at the rink. Um, we were able to also rent the office space that was currently, or that was formerly um, used by the Thunder, and then. Uh, the, the empty space, the, there's a Boy Scout pack that comes in once a month and, and uses that space. Um, but we're hoping to come up with something a little bit more useful up there. So um, here are some of the comments from our users. And then the favorite part of the presentation, my favorite part. Any questions? First, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Really appreciated that. Um, knowing that you're in such close proximity to the wind surge, mm -hmm. are there any collaborations that you guys um, are considering or anything to try to get those who go to the baseball stadium when it's hot mm -hmm. to come inside where it's cool? Yeah, I met Matt the other day, and um, we're actually we we did talk a little bit about that. Um, I know that the bar is going to run some specials before their games and stuff like that. And I did talk to talk to him about the possibility of doing an all sports camp. So I'm really glad Larry's here because I can talk to him too. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. Um, so yes. Question for you: mm -hmm. Your projected financials show a deficit for the next three or four years. And okay. Then Go profitability and I think it's four or five years somewhere in there. Is that this, right? This may be a question for Lou. Yeah, that's yeah. above that's above my pay grade. Okay. Unfortunately. Okay. Lou? I just want to know what what, what changes yeah. in, in three or four years now to turn to profitability. Okay. That was the driving more people into the building, more uh, ownership for the facility. Um, usage of the facility I'm happy to say I, I just received from our our accounting team um, and be sent out to, to Troy and, and the finance department there in the city that February we made a thirty thousand dollar profit almost thirty one thousand dollar profit um, for February already uh, when we were expected to already start taking a loss on our facility so that's a positive um, that I think we might actually get to that sustainability, uh, at least a, a, a zero net, uh, sooner than, than we projected. There's a lot of unknowns at the time that we put that budget together and with everything being uh, in disarray. So Sean, the team has been working extremely hard to, to close that gap. Um, through January and just February, we're already $40,000 better than our budgeted uh, for this first two months of the year. Councilman Johnston, to add on to Lou's comments. So our staff has been working very closely with them and two major things have really kind of changed. And obviously the second sheet of ice has a huge impact in the programming and the opportunity to 
earn more revenue. And we've also been working with Sean and his team in regards to more marketing. So we're looking at uh, getting more information out using our social media, using our opportunities in regards to marketing to help them with their programming and getting the word out. So we were very, very conservative. And every time, um, just as Sean had mentioned earlier, every time we think we are in the clear, moving forward, getting things ready mechanically, uh, something else has happened. Um, so I don't want to jinx that right now. But we're seeing that as soon as everything kind of moves forward in regards to all the equipment being replaced and repaired, uh, we, we, I think we purchased a new Zamboni a year and a half ago. All these little things that we've done, I think we're going to see some really good improvements and a lot more programming and a lot more activity over at the ice rink. Um, there's still opportunities for some more rental revenue. Um, and one of the things we've been talking about is sponsorship, sponsorships at the location. So uh, a larger initiative across the city, uh, but this particular facility is prime for some really good sponsorship, naming rights, and that would also help with some of the, uh, the revenues. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. No comments, but a few, or no questions, but a few comments. Um, first off, I think after years of bad press, the good press over the past couple months has probably helped propel you forward. So I'm very appreciative of media outlets covering the good things happening um, at the ICE Center. In addition to that, um, I can vouch for one of the public skate nights. I went for a birthday, and there's probably 300 people um, at the event on a Friday night, and it was packed the entire night. Um, and I think people were probably running out of skates because of how many people were there. So I think it was an incredible experience. Uh, my friends and I didn't want to leave, and so I was very appreciative of that. Mary Wu and I did have the chance to go to the bar. I think I've been to the Ice Center five times since January, and I've really appreciated it. I've also appreciated your ability to make your own investments in the ice rink, um, specifically with the lights, the scoreboard, and the investments that you are willing to make at the property, um, I think speaks of your guys' leadership for it. I'm very excited about the idea of sponsorships, and your staff has been incredible too. And so just thank you for the work that you all are doing. I've seen substantial change um, since I've uh, been actively going to the ice rink, and I'm appreciative of that. In addition, um, I guess two quick questions. Can you talk briefly about the advisory board that you're looking at forming? I know that we've had email correspondence about that. I think that will help bring in um, professional and outside experience looking in as well. And then in addition to that, uh, where can I apply to be a full-time Zamboni driver? <laughs> and am I qualified? Uh, it doesn't take much. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So um, as opposed, or uh, in answer to your question about the advisory board, um, basically it's grown out of an idea. I just wanted to recognize ice sports in Wichita because there's a great history there. And I just wanted to put a mural up. So I talked to some people that I thought might be able to help me with that. And it's kind of turned into a whole different animal. Um, we are trying to find ways to fill the spot upstairs that used to be Genesis, um, the Genesis gym with uh, something that not only the rink can be proud of, but I think the city of Wichita too. So um, we're very early on, obviously, um, but we're hoping that we can come up with something good. So. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Lou. Um, just in closing on this particular topic, I, I totally agree that we've turned the corner here with the ice rink. Things have really changed. Uh, the investment that they've been putting in, not only with the lights, but just uh, the elbow grease, uh, the, the customer service has really made a change. They actually purchased some uh, new rental skates, which was a really big hit. Um, so it's the little things that make a difference, and they're really doing a great job with that. So I, I, it's been a great partnership with them, and so I think we're going to see bigger things in the future. One last thing to add about that, um, Sean talked a little bit about some of these outside tournaments coming here to Wichita, and when we hosted the Synchro Ice Skating through USA uh, Figure Skating, huge impact. It was a huge commitment on our part to bring in a temporary chiller to open up the second sheet of ice. That's something that they really appreciated, 
and I know that we are on their radar to bring in more outside tournaments and, and competitions here to Wichita, which is a huge economic impact. So we're really excited about that. Um, so next, uh, we have our in-house staff from the golf course, uh, Jesse Kaufman. He's going to go over several of the items in regards to golf. All right. Hello, everyone. And uh, my name is Jesse Kaufman, as he said. I'm the manager of the golf division. Uh, thank you all for the opportunity to give the update this morning. Uh, before I begin, I just want to point out I've placed a, uh, the 2024 golf guide um, on the table for everyone to look at. Um, we just put this out last week. It's got all of our, most of our programming and events and information about the entire division and the, the golf uh, program just as a whole. So I wanted to make sure you had a chance to look at that. And inside, I put a copy of the uh, 2023 kind of financial, a snapshot of the financial. So if you had any questions, I'll be glad to answer that. Um, I've been here just under two years now, and there has been a lot of change, more than I could ever go over in this, this presentation today. So I'm um, kind of focusing on what the things that we accomplished in 2023, the, the, just the overall, um, everything that happened last year, um, and moving into the for future, what we're planning on. So one thing that happened last year, we formed the Golf Board of Governors. Um, I wanted to start with this just to make sure everyone's aware of how this board is um, constructed. We have seven members. We have one representative from each course. And these four individuals are very active in the leagues and just everything that happens at their home course. Uh, they do a great job of talking to the, the golfers at each course and bringing that information back so we can help make better decisions, not just on what we see, but what our golfers and what our customers want. So um, we have those four individuals. We have an agronomy specialist um, who has a lifetime uh, background of agronomy and golf course superintendent. <clears throat> um, a financialist, financial specialist, um, and then the retail F&B um, specialist position is vacant right now. We had an individual that just due to time commitments uh, just said he, he really couldn't commit any longer. So I have a nominee that I'll be um, passing a bow to you guys for approval to fill that seat. So, um, But everything that we do is, again, based off, we try to make the decisions based on the golfers and what the feedback that we get from them instead of just what we feel we need to do. So uh, I wanted to make sure and point that out, that that, that board has been a huge help this past year and in, in planning and, and everything that we've done. So starting with the financials, in 2022, our um, revenue that came through the uh, POS system was $5.8 Last year it was just just under six and a half million. So we had an increase of six hundred sixty six thousand in just straight revenue. Um, of course, revenue is great, but it doesn't matter if your if your expenses are up. So at the bottom, I put it, the the excess of revenues over expenditures, basically our profit was seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars last year. Um, and I'm going to get into a sec in a second. We did a lot of projects, so I'm very happy with that number, uh, considering all the things that we accomplished above and beyond the normal operations. Participation was incredible last year, 2022. We did just under 175,000 rounds, and everyone thought that you, there's no, you can't put anybody else out there. Well, we found a way to put 13,000 more people. So we had 100, almost 188,000 rounds um, through the four golf courses last year, which is, um, I want to definitely say what a great job staff has done. Um, if you stand in our pro shop on a nice day for 10 minutes, you'll be exhausted from just listening to the things that are coming at them so fast. So staff did a tremendous job with keeping up with everything. Um, we had 50, over 51,000 unique visitors. So those are any type of transactions that we had um, come through our system from unique users. So whether that's golf, driving range, food and beverage, um, buying merchandise, um, and that number is actually a little bit low because if someone comes and just buys something, we don't actually create an account. So these are accounts that had activity in our system. So over 51,000, um, I would say that number is quite a bit higher, but that's the ones that I could prove. So uh, it's a big impact, 51,000 people. Um, that's a lot of people that use our facilities. And then when they come out, what do they feel about our facility? What, so we do a survey. We send surveys out to um, everyone that plays golf. And I'll put a couple of uh, examples up here. Uh, the first was based on your overall experience today. Would you return to this course? And as you can see, it was I think it was 96% said yes, 2% said no, and then 2% made a comment. Um, 
very happy with that number. Um, that's a 96% return rate is great. Um, the second one on the top right was where you greeted in a friendly and professional manner. And you can see, I think 90, I think it was right at 93% um, said yes, which customer service was a huge goal um, to increase last year. So that's a good re uh, reflection that even though we were as busy as we were, we were still able to um, kind of increase that customer service level. And then the last was, uh, do you consider the course to be in good condition? Um, this is a little bit skewed because it's, it's right at, <clears throat> excuse me, 80% said yes. There was only, I think, 3% that said no. And then the other, when you read those comments, almost every one was, course was great, really enjoyed our rounds. So in reality, the positive remarks was about 95% there. So um, happy with that course conditions. Last year, we had a lot of winter kill coming out of the winter, out of the winter, the, um, which is basically where the grass dies in spots uh, because of the conditions that we had last winter with the sudden freeze, the dry, we had no rain. So um, this year, I, I'm so happy we're coming into the spring in a much better condition. Um, so it, I think that that number is even going to increase this year. Some of the projects we were able to accomplish last year, probably the number one from a customer standpoint were the new carts that we were able to get. Um, it, we went over it in, in length, but we had carts that were dying on the course. They were in terrible condition. So adding the new carts uh, was a great plus uh, for our customers and to our staff. And um, the fund that we created to support, financially support the lease of the new carts is working perfectly. So we're very happy with how that's turned out. Um, total clubhouse renovations, if you haven't been to the courses, I've got some pictures coming up in a second, but we've completely renovated um, SIM, TEX, and MAC. Um, feedback has been fantastic on that. Uh, we bought a lot of new equipment, over $300,000 in new equipment, and we have really worked hard to kind of build out a five-year plan on equipment based on priority and, and what equipment we need to start with. We, you know, we all, we all know golf just as a whole didn't had a rough decade between basically 2010 and 2020 and there wasn't a lot of money to put back into the system so um, we're unfortunately playing catch up a little bit with a lot of the projects and things that we uh, equipment that we need to replace and, and all that but uh, last year we definitely made a big jump uh, in, in getting closer to where we need to be with equipment. New driving range balls that's a sounds like a simple thing but it's very important the amount of uh, people that we have use our driving ranges and if the balls are bad it's it's not fun um, and it's not productive. So um, that was a big thing for customer service. Unfortunately, our irrigation, we all know, is um, not the best. It's very, very old. We did spend a lot of money on that irrigation just trying to keep it alive. I mean, just, just where we can survive. So um, between two hundred fifty and 300000 just on irrigation repairs, some major repairs. We had to replace a, several pumps, um, a well lining, uh, some of the platforms that the, the motors and pumps were sitting on. So um, we has just to keep it keep it going. We initiated a cart path repair project that's set to start in about two weeks. Um, that we just closed that bid. It came in under budget, which is great, and I think you guys will see the the final approval come across this week probably, or next week. Uh, we added the golf simulator, which has been been a huge hit. We've already had about ten thousand dollars worth of revenue come off come from that golf simulator in two and a half months. Um, and we're getting ready to start leagues on that that I think are going to be a huge hit. So that's been great. And then our volunteer program, not just with starters and marshals, um, but we've got groups that are coming out and helping with projects on the course. If At MAC, we've got a group that has cleaned up all the edges of the ponds. Year before last, the ponds were empty. There was no water in them. Um, and they just kind of got weed, not weeds, but just brush and different things around the edges. It looks phenomenal now. Um, we've got a group at Auburn that's going to help with the project on Tuesday, and we're getting a lot more of that interaction, which is fantastic. Um, so the clubhouses, if you haven't been, this is Tex Consolver. If you remember, um, the golf course clubhouses looked, best way I can say it, kind of like a old elementary cafeteria. So um, we did new floors, new paint. Uh, we put TVs throughout, new counters. We just painted this counter it was it was it was in good shape we just painted it and made it match so um, feedback again has been fantastic at Mac the these aren't the best pictures we're waiting on Collins merchandise displays to come in so we're kind of just using what we have they should be in in two or three weeks it's really going to make this look a lot better uh, but if you remember the old pro shop when you walked in it was in that room to the left and once the customer paid for their golf the employees couldn't see out of that room so they it was just here's your key good luck out there. 
and we had no control, couldn't see what was going on. So we moved the pro shop out to the main area so they can see number one, number 10, basically everything um, that they need to see to make sure things are going smoothly. The golf simulator at Tex, um, again, this has been a huge hit, not only with customers using it, but we also can do lessons. We're gonna do the leagues, we do club fittings. It just adds a whole extra um, element to the, the services that we can provide. So talking about revenues were great, expenses. Um, in 2023, the, really the, the only area that went up was labor and from the year before. In 2022, we had several vacant positions, my position, food and beverage manager, the golf course superintendent at SIM, accounting clerk. There was a lot of vacant positions for most of the year. So adding those positions, um, trying to get the seasonal staff up a little bit in their pay, which we still have a long way to go. Um, and then a push to increase customer service, making sure we have the staff that we need to ad adequately require or provide the uh, customer service. That went up, all the other expenses went down about $100,000, um, which is something we're very proud of, especially considering all the things that we were able to accomplish. So um, pretty, pretty happy in that. Now, everything sounds great, we're making money. Um, we still have a lot of things that we need to accomplish. We've worked with the Golf Board of Governors to create a five-year plan of projects and it's pages and pages of things that need to be done and we work to prioritize those. And then we're trying to be very careful that we don't get too ambitious. We wanna make sure our fund stays healthy in case we have a series of bad weather, the economy, whatever happens. If, if business slows down, we wanna make sure we're not getting ahead of ourselves. So um, we're trying to really be strategic in how we tackle these projects. But some of the ones that we, we are looking at, there's a lot of tree work that needs to be done. Um, working with some of these things are becoming a safety issue. So I'm working right now very closely with forestry to kind of see what we need, what they might be able to accomplish. Of course, they're so, they've got so much work, it's, it's hard for them to get out. So we may have to contract some of that work out. Um, we definitely want to make sure everything's safe for our guests. The addition of a retention pond at Mac in 2022, uh, the, they, at Mac, they basically did some work to, so the retention pond would hold more water. Um, and the water bill from city water that we used last year was about $80,000 less than in 2022. So it had a huge impact. Obviously we, we, we don't want to use city water if we, if we can avoid it. So if we could build this extra retention pond, we've got it. We've had someone come out, lay out the plans, um, but it is a big expense up front. Bunker renovations right now at Mac and Auburn, especially bunkers are the, one of the major issues. They should have been redone a long time ago. We've just been trying to do what we can to keep them okay, but they're, they wash out, they don't drain, they need a lot of work. So we're working, I actually have someone coming out um, on Tuesday, I believe. We're gonna have him take a look. He's an expert in that area and kind of draw up a plan and, and see what we can figure out um, to do there. Um, equipment needs, obviously we, we've had a very old fleet of maintenance equipment and we're slowly going through that to replace and uh, we've, we've made a big jump um, in getting that better, but we're still, we still have a lot of equipment that we need to replace. Um, of course, labor cost is continuously gonna go up and then the cart path repair, which now um, that is set to start in a couple of weeks. So um, one thing I, I definitely want to mention today, something I really want to do, and this is uh, something we've talked about in the Golf Board of Governors a lot, is adding a roaming, me roaming mechanic. Um, golf courses will typically say one of the most important positions at a golf course is the mechanic. We have four golf courses with no mechanics. So every time something breaks down, we have to send, have them come pick up that piece of equipment, pay for that, pay for them to bring it back. They have it for two, three weeks. And, you know, we can't tell the grass, hey, stop growing for a minute until we get this back. So we get, we get behind and cause a lot of problems. So with this position, I think the savings would far outweigh the cost of the position. Uh, we would save again on that contract and the hauling cost. Um, better performing equipment, regular maintenance would be done on the equipment so it's performing the way it should. Uh, there of course should be less downtime. Along with the mechanic, I wanna work directly with this position to create an asset management program where we can track the equipment, make sure the regular preventive maintenance is being done, track all the cost with that, with that equipment uh, for repair so we can determine when it's time to buy new equipment, does it make sense, how much are we spending, and how much does it make sense to buy new equipment or 
you know, keep this going for another year. So um, I think this position would be a huge addition to our program. Um, and then, of course, the one thing that's still um, over our head that we're, we're trying to figure out is the irrigation replacement. That's a huge expense. Um, we've, I know we've, we've talked about it for a while now, but uh, we're, our youngest irrigation system, I think, is 28 years old. Um, and we have constant battles with those things. We have, uh, we're, we're constantly just this past week, we were at number 10 at Auburn. We had to close that hole and tee everybody else up in the fairway because the main line bust and uh, we had to dig it all out and spend the entire week doing that instead of the other stuff that we should do. Um, it's a, it never ends. So we're spending thousands in repairs right now. Um, of course, a big chunk of our labor hours, which is we don't have enough of anyway, is being spent doing this. Uh, it's very inefficient watering. Um, we, we have to basically to get this water to where we need it, we have to turn water on manually to and put water where we don't need it and flood this area so the course conditions are good. Um, and then the, eventually, especially at SIM right now, there's we're on the brink of a total failure and then we're in, a, we're in big trouble um, when that happens because we don't have water. Obviously, we don't have a golf course. So that's our, our biggest challenge without a doubt. And, and um, I don't know. That's a that's a big one. We're, our quote for SIM was 1.5 million to replace that. Um, so we're working to try to figure out a path to get that done. So I think that's, uh, that's the end of my presentation. I'll be glad to answer any questions. And uh, yeah, uh, I mean it was good, good, good. But there's there's definitely challenges that we still have. I would just say thank you. I was at a fundraiser last night and. Really excited to talk about um, the appreciated and notice all the improvements with the cards and the clubhouse and all those different things. So definitely appreciate that and big kudos to you for making a lot of this happen. Thank you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> hey, Jesse, I just want to thank you and Troy uh, for all the work you put into this. And uh, I think you've just done a great job. Uh, the courses are looking a lot better. If they improve as much from, to, from last year to this year as they did, from two years to last year, uh, they'll be amazing. So it's, it's, it's quite a benefit for the city and the citizens. Thank you. I appreciate it. So not everybody can afford to belong to country club, so yeah. it's nice. That's right. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jesse. And I, I want to echo uh, appreciation for Jesse and his team. His staff has done a fantastic job. They've been working really, really hard. Um, COVID, a little bit of a silver lining, uh, pushed a lot of people outside, pushed a lot of people into our golf courses. Um, so that was really exciting. The next presentation is in regards to Stryker. And I have Timber Lee and Larry Inlow here to talk about uh, all the great things happening over at Stryker. Good morning. Good morning. Well, a lot of fun stuff going on at Stryker. If you make it over to the northeast side of town on any weekend, especially in that Greenwich area, you definitely see a lot of uniforms, a lot of parents, a lot of just activity. Don't try going to a restaurant because they're packed, which is great, but uh, we're seeing a lot of fun activity over that way. Um, one thing you'll notice on these slides here are, is, uh, and we'll show some pictures later on, Shield Stryker Sports. And then here as well, uh, and I think we'll show a few pictures. Those went up just this last week. So the signs up out there, bright, shiny new, uh, Shield Striker Sports. And so it's, uh, it's, a great, it's a great day to be out there. Um, that partnership right there was, uh, you know, Council Member Tuttle, the city, uh, Larry, and the team out there really came together in a collaborative effort to to bring Shields in, which has been probably a three, three plus year endeavor. And, you know, kudos to them. I think in almost every community they go, they go into, they really invest in the people, they really invest in the community. And so Wichita was definitely the benefactor of this. Um, I'll get into a few slides here that show what, how we use those funds. It was 125,000 a year for uh, five years, 625 total. Uh, the city fronted that money and is going to be refunded through the next, you know, five years as that comes in. 100% of the funds were used towards these projects that I'll show you. 
Um, as you can tell, our, you know, the, our bread and butter is our be able to communicate with our customers. So our, our numbers are going up on all the social media platforms, email subscribers, um, all of that. This is, uh, and I guess one last thing I'll, I'll point out here, I guess it, um, I don't know if it shows it up there now, but over, with over 500 Google reviews, 4.5 star rating, and with, you know, 10,000 people out there a weekend, there's a lot of horses in the barn. And so we, uh, we take a pride in that, definitely. This one is probably one of the slides I'm most proud of uh, for the team at Stryker, is that we added an additional 14 states to the map of people that are coming to Wichita from around the country. And so when we're talking about a, a collaborative effort with the ice rink, things like that, to where these people that are coming in town, we want them to experience Exploration Place. We want them to experience downtown and Old Town, the ice rink, things like that. So we love it, the fact that the word is getting out. The word is getting out that Wichita is a destination for a myriad of sports, not just soccer, but a myriad of sports. And Larry will get into some of those that have come this past year. But uh, we got a high bar set. We want, the full, we want the full map. I'm not satisfied. I want some Hawaiians here. <laughs> and then I can do it. We can do it maybe a, a trip back too. So uh, in talking about uh, some of the upgrades, these were some of the new ones not related to the shields. Um, is, uh, this is, these are the, the locker rooms. And so where, what these were, were some, uh, a, a reallocation of some Starbond funds in addition to monies that uh, us as operators, we contributed uh, uh, $250,000 approximately or pledged $250,000 to on the shortcoming there, but these were uh, brought online this last year. Massive success. Each locker room is, we have one on the north and one on the south side of this championship field. Each one of those can be divided into two locker rooms, so host four teams, or one large locker room in the case of American football. And so we can, we can host both of those. And yes, we took care of the referees in this upgrade. On the far right here, they have their own locker room and shower, which they are very, very, very pleased about. So those were, those were a massive success. Um, a part of the Shields renovations, this was made possible, is that you see the old press box on the left. And if you can imagine you've been to most any high school football game, that would not suffice. And so what we have over here is three separate rooms. Each room can house four to five, maybe even people with a crow's nest on top. Uh, this is one anytime Larry and the team visit Wichita, anytime we get a sheet of prerequisites that a complex has to have in order to, for, to even contemplate coming to Wichita, a press box is, is a lot of times on that list. And the one we have just did not suffice. And so this was, this was a huge, very needed upgrade and so a wise use of the funds there. Uh, so we're excited that is, uh, we completed it just in the last weeks or so, right? Final punch list is going through right now. Backstop nets, talk about just exciting stuff, right? Backstop nets. The little things, the little things right? <laughs> Miss, uh, you've been out there many times, you can attest to that with that. And in fact, uh, uh, the President's Cup, when they came out here, one of the main things they talked about was the use of the nets that made the usability of the whole complex so much better that you didn't have cross balls going everywhere, interrupting play, possible injury. And yes, we do have a big retention pond that balls seem to just be a magnet to, that kids are climbing fences, trying to go get the balls. And so uh, safety, playability, everything. I know it's not a sexy item, but it, it added so much to the complex. And that was also uh, used those were some of the striker, or sorry, some of the Shields funds were used towards that. This is where I'll kick it over to, to Larry. Um, he and his team have honestly done a masterful job of, of getting the word out. Um, not only the professionalism, when, when the likes of the President's Cup, who have tournaments all over the country, when they come to Wichita and they are blown away by the hospitality, they are blown away by the accessibility by people that are on staff, they're ready to help just in time, whether that be information, whether that be needs they have when they travel, you just never know what you might need. And 
that is the reason why people are coming back is a lot of, because he and his staff. And I think these other managers can attribute that uh, or attest to that as well with their staffs. So I'd like Larry to come up and talk about, you know, kind of where we've been, where we're at, and also a little bit where we're going. So come on up. All right. Thank you very much. Um, as you can see up there, um, you know, and I'm not going to to read it to you, but um, it's nice to see that we had another growth um, in visitations over 2023. A lot of that has to do with the national events that we have coming to town. Um, NEIA Men's National College Soccer Championships, the Junior College Men's and Women's Division I National Championships, uh, the President's Cup Youth National Championships. And then on top of that, we have 430 youth teams from the region playing in our youth league nine months out of the 12. We've got them in the spring, we've got them in the fall, and then throughout the winter. So the place is hopping all the time. Our youth league is growing um, to 30, uh, 34 teams. And then we also have our youth tournaments that we bring in six a year that are four of those are operated by ourselves, and then two of those are operated by a local entity um, that put that on but they are drawing all the states within the region and that'll show up here in just a second on the next slide so here you go so here's some of the uh, tournaments that we run throughout the year um, and you can see the team count for each um, and then, of course, the correlating states that go down with those tournaments. So we're always bringing that outside dollar in. We're always bringing that to the corridor, to the city of Wichita, um, having a major economic impact on those. This is um, kind of a rundown of our championship series that I mentioned about the uh, President's Cup, the Junior College, and the NAIA coming to town. Their effect that they had on our community, the length of their stay, um, and certainly the spin that they had while they were visiting our city um, and our facility. The good news is, is we get all three of those back again this year. So, um, you know, not, it's not a, uh, you know, one and done kind of thing for us. We're always trying to keep them coming back for more and a lot has to do with the customer service. The city itself is just fantastic. The location in the country is a big deal for a lot of these bids. Um, so that's a major selling point for us on top of a top-notch facility and top-notch city. Um, we go there, but I, I want to make sure that we mention Visit Wichita at the bottom because they are a fantastic ally, a wonderful friend in all of this, and they do a ton of heavy, heavy lifting when it comes to bringing these events here to Wichita. And I love working with Josh and Susie and their staff, um, fantastic individuals, and um, I just want to sing their praises because it certainly do. Okay, so this is a breakdown of the two collegiate national championships that we had. Now keep in mind, the junior college was both men's and women's, um, where NAIA was just the men's side. Um, it was the first time that we've hosted the NAIA, um, and so we're slowly trying to climb that ladder to get to the NCAAs as well so that we can account for all collegiate levels um, coming to our city and enjoying our facility. Um, as you can kind of see the breakdown there, um, 35 states, uh, 40 teams, and then the economic impact um, of over $1.2 million for those, those two events. This is the President's Cup. Now this is over 2,000 people visiting our city, and this is a week-long event. So they're staying in hotels for an extended stay. They're spending money in our restaurants. They're buying things at our shops. Um, you know, all of those great things. And so this is a big deal for the city of Wichita. This is the first time we've ever hosted this. Um, we will have it again this year. Um, and I know that the U.S. Soccer Federation is extremely happy about that. And a little side note on that is we are currently in the process of bidding them for a five-year agreement cool. um, to come here. Um, and so we're super, super excited about that presentation uh, with them and waiting on their decision. Um, and doing what we can to make this their home. Our idea is, and now I'm not a baseball guy, Timber's a baseball guy, but to make Wichita what Omaha is to baseball for soccer. So we want this to be their headquarters for that. We want them to put up stuff here, keep it here, and return here, and bring certainly all the teams from across the country here. This is just a quick list of all the things that uh, we did in 2023. Um, as you can see, it is a multiple uh, sport facility. We paint lines for lacrosse. We put down uh, lines for football. 
Um, we were fortunate enough to have Isaiah Pacheco camp. Um, we host Cape Inn High School foot Friday Nights Football. Um, we do ultimate frisbee and alternative sports and things of that nature. We do wrestling. They bring the mats in. Um, all those things, anything that we can do to diversify the asset that is the facility and bring more money to the city is what we're engaged in. Um, so it's, it's a fun, big game of Tetris to play. Um, and it's certainly getting more and more difficult uh, to find that space because we're so full. All right, so this is my last slide, and I wanted just to reiterate that this is a true multi-sport facility, and as you can see, the actual pictures of the different things that we have going on in the top, I, I failed to mention the uh, flag football that we also have, um, and those kinds of things, softball, baseball, on, and inside the uh, large indoor building is extremely fun to watch. You're up close and personal with that, and those kids are amazing. But, um, you know, when we talk about the, the multi-sport destination, um, somebody in this room, uh, somebody that I consider a, uh, a true leader, um, an asset to the city of Wichita, Council Member Tuttle, once said uh, that she sees the Sports Forum LLC um, as somebody who operates the Strikers facility like they own it. And that struck a chord with me. Obviously, we don't own it. It's a great city asset, but it struck a chord with me because it speaks to our passion. It speaks to the energy that we bring to running the facility. And so um, I, I think we all take great pride in that and giving anybody that comes to city of Wichita or anybody that lives in the city of Wichita a fantastic, safe experience at the facility. And that's our main goal always. So with that, what's that? Oh, the signed pictures. Okay, so this is on the front of our press our uh, ticket booth um, as you walk into the stadium, and then just to the left, it's just at a picture, but the directional for the fields they've also added the shield, the new uh, Shields Striker Shield. Say that three times fast. Uh, to that, um, it'll be on all directional signage. They just got up the major marquee sign just off 29th in Greenwich yesterday. Um, that is off the elevator shaft that leads up to the brand new uh, reno uh, renovated press box. And there is the great big new sign that we have that announces that uh, literally just across the street from Top Golf. But we're super excited about that. All of our social media, all of our, our website, and all of that is updated with the new logo. Our emails are even updated with that. I've been talking with Lucas, who is the manager of the uh, Shields. And he wants to make this a big deal, so don't be surprised if you see more about the new signage out there and the relationship between Stryker and Shields as we move forward. Questions? I don't have any questions, but just awesome presentation. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. And you're exactly right. When there's a tournament, you can't eat. You can barely. <laughs> you can barely shop. You can, and and all and not just the Greenwich corridor, but all the way you know over into Thirteenth and Bradley Fair. So, the impact that this has not only in allowing adults and kids to be participatory in athletic events you know, team building, um, all the things, but then also the economic development opportunities that it has. And, and I have reached out to Lucas too at Shields to see what they want to do to make a big deal of this. I think we definitely should do some media, social media, and just really thank them and praise them for their um, amazing partnership with the city of Wichita. This is a great example of a public-private partnership. And, and I do joke with Lewis, you know, with Lucas, them with the, the Nets, um, they're risking loss of revenue because a lot of soccer balls were getting lost in the pond, right? But no, so thank you for all you do and thank you for being here today. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just want to make a comment. Um, greatly appreciate the partnership and the work that's been done to promote the use of this as a multi-sport facility, which is what we originally uh, promoted to the Department of Commerce and the state when we received the star bond funding for this project. Everything that you've done, what you've done at the sports forum, as well as what we've seen with the development uh, that was spurred in this area, has created what I think is an extremely successful star bond district. And I know that there's been some 
there, there's been some analysis that question that, and yet you saw the map in terms of the attendees and the reach that you've had with your activities. And I'll be updating the council later this year, but right now it looks as if the debt for the Starbond District will be retired approximately eight years early. And it, it, once that is retired, we'll get over $500,000 in sales tax revenue coming into the general fund. So that'll give you an idea about the impact of the development in the K96 in Greenwich area. And um, I, again, with the continued promotion and the uh, attempt uh, also visit Wichita and their work to get more national tournaments here, I think it's just, yeah, this turned out, I think, to be a, a tremendous success, and uh, I'm, I'll be happy as we continue to share more information. And Bob, didn't we, the CID ended in eight years instead of 22? Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but yes, it, it's significantly early. Win-win. Yeah. I would definitely say that the uh, in meeting with the state lieutenant governor, uh, he would echo those sentiments, and they use this as an example about why this public-private partnership, why Star Moms do work when it's done right. And so... Yeah. Well, it makes sense. And that makes sense, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. uh, thanks for that. That's also awesome. Here we go. I would just say I appreciate the focus on the multi-sport complex because for a long time, I mean, I just go out there for soccer and that's really all I ever see. So I appreciate seeing um, the distance that you guys are going to use the facility for more than just soccer. So appreciate all of that. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Timber. Appreciate it. Three items just to wrap up really quick. Uh, they spoke a lot about in regards to the improvements, uh, the, the funds that we got from, from Shields, which we really appreciate. But to put all that into practice is our public works. They are the ones that led those projects, um, the expansion of the locker rooms. So uh, I see some of our public work friends back there. Much appreciated because you guys are the ones that make all this happen after we get the dollars. So thank you very much for that. Um, lastly, uh, visit Wichita. Not only do they have an impact here, but they have an impact on all the other areas that we have recreational activities going on. A lot of people think about parks and recreation as just being a one-way ticket for dollars, but there truly is a lot of economic impact, whether it, we're talking about tennis, whether we're talking about soccer, whether we're talking about uh, youth sports as well. So um, parks and recreation, yeah, we might put in a little bit of money in there for that economic impact. So just want to put a shout out to visit Wichita for all their work, whether it's over at the ice rink, um, other activities that they're bringing in. Uh, wrestling, I think, was one of the big tournaments that they brought in as well. So um, with that, I think I'm completed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.